Ooh, welcome back to Conference Championship Preview. We are so... What the fuck? What are you doing? I just felt a really warm sensation on my finger. We are so <laughs> confident that our picks today are going to hit that if they do not, we are going to take over Snapback Agency, Company, Sports, all of the above. BG owns you. Thoughts? You're not confident in the Ravens? Ravens win the Super Bowl, you give up Snapback. Deal? You can take if, the Ravens, we got the field. If Brock Purdy... Okay. Doesn't turn into a pumpkin. You I don't like that narrative. Like the pump. I don't like the phrase the pumpkin. Why? It's overused. Okay, Everyone says but it. that's what he does. He Next. turns into a pumpkin. Would you just like rather a different vegetable? Or you, All right, or if the Ravens and Niners meet in the Super Bowl, we swap companies. I didn't say he's nothing about companies? swapping. Yeah. Mm-mm. There's no swaps involved. It's just, this is just a strategic takeover. Ravens win, I keep the company. Is, is that this going to be saying? a toxic workplace if it's Ravens, Niners? Hell yeah. Uh, Are you guys going to be annoying about it? I'd be annoying if we won. But, like, leading up to it, I think I'd be humble. Yeah. I mean, Dude, I'm I'm just locked in. Okay. I mean, he hasn't he hasn't been humble since fucking, like, week four. That's fair. Is that true? <laughs> Is that All true? right, fuck it. We did best. Fuck <laughs> it. We ball. Let's start. What we got? All right. Well, first game up. Chiefs heading to Baltimore. Take on the Ravens. Ravens are now three and a half point favorites. Looks like it opened up at three. We even see a four out there, so the spread is creeping up in favor of the Ravens. Obviously coming off a pretty pretty uh, big shellacking of the Houston Texans. You know, the first half started a little slow for them. Maybe it was a little rust. We kind of addressed it last time. Maybe there were some other factors going into it, but they came out second half, showed the world that they are the dominant team that they've been leading up into that divisional round. The most impressive thing I saw from the Ravens it's obvious, yeah, the way that they rallied around Dalvin Cook. Dude. I play, saw the same yeah. thing. <laughs> Dude, Dalvin Cook put a spark on that team. 100%. I mean, his yards per carry was insane. Off the charts. Crazy. Yeah. Is he One a Hall of Famer? Generational. Yeah. But, uh, no, in all seriousness, D'Amico Ryans comes out, blitzes Lamar heavy about 71% of the time. The Ooh. highest percentage of blitz Lamar has ever faced in the single half of football. Ravens go to the locker room after 10-10 tie. They come out, kind of shorten up the pass game, and, you know, obviously had way more success with that. I think that's a huge dub for the Ravens because this is something that has obviously troubled Lamar in the past, getting blitz at a heavy percent of the time. Um, He's bad under pressure, under mm-hmm. the blitz. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Historically, up until this year. Right, and I, I think that's, that's why I mean. It's like the one maybe weakness or the one answer that defense really – had for Lamar, Harbaugh and Lamar have shown, and and Munkin, Munkin too, fixing the offense. But yeah, do you do you attribute that to fully Lamar to being under pressure? Or? Fully to Munkin. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Saturday's game was a microcosm of the differences between twenty three this team and nineteen, and even twenty twenty one twenty two, which was the halftime adjustment. Greg mm-hmm. Roman built a great system, and you know this as a Niners fan. He's incredible in, at installing this system, but any time it gets countered, he's, like, just lost. And the same thing. That's how I felt with Arthur Smith this year. <laughs> Big, great system he built. <laughs> same thing with the defense. Like, just no adjustments. And I think the game Saturday was a tale of two halves. And Lamar, when, when blitzed from, I think it was from 19 to 22, ranked 36 in the NFL, which means he was literally ranking behind – backup quarterbacks and he was fifth this year so that that is the difference and it was encouraging no panic at all team came out and and yeah. smacked them i mean it makes sense they're using dudes like zay flowers way way more around the line of scrimmage a lot of screen pass and stuff on the offense so you could see the change was, uh, was super dramatic like on yeah. screen when you're actually yeah. watching them play second half they went with heavier bodies more tight ends lamar was getting it out from three and a half seconds down to damn near two seconds so mm-hmm. it minor adjustments but made the world of a difference um wish the niners could kind of make halftime adjustments. It felt like <laughs> when they went into the locker room in their game. We'll get into it in a second, but, you know, weirdly enough, it, it feels like teams... The only thing they say is Brock could be better. Brock could be better, yeah, for pumpkin sure. Brock. <laughs> pumpkin Brock. So, going into this next game against the Chiefs, you're facing playoff Spags, who, historically... Great coach. Been pretty good around this time. Um, however, when you look at the Chiefs and how they played the Bills, they really didn't blitz Josh Allen too much on first and second down. They were allowing the Bills to get all the short yards that they want, you know, these little QB scrambles, the dump off to the flats. And then it wasn't really until like third down that Spag started to put the pressure on Josh Allen a little bit. You kind of look at this Ravens offense, like, is that going to work against them, allowing them to like run the ball, keep the chains moving? Like it, it kind of feels 
like ever since Joe Brady took over the Bills, they became a much more run heavy, less explosive team. Now the Ravens are just like a better version of that. Don't you kind of feel like um, I feel like for the Chiefs, the question it's less on like defense, and it's like if if because the Chiefs, I think objectively, probably played their best offensive game of football at least in a, quite a long time, right? In that game this last week, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Totally. So for me, it's like are are they back to playing offense again or not? And it's almost like the defense. Not that defense doesn't matter, but I feel like the question at hand is like if if the Chiefs are staying in that state. Then it's going to be tough for. I mean, you're more, team you're more worried about their offense than their defense. Yeah, hundred percent. I feel like that. I mean, that's that's the key. To the I game. think that's the only way we get a game. Right. Is if the Chiefs' offense it has officially returned to form. Yeah, like they're going to need to put like twenty eight up probably to beat you guys. Well, the Chiefs' defense. I hate this narrative that this is like a down year for the Chiefs. Down year offensively, but this mm-hmm. is this is how Brady won all those Super Bowls. Like this is the best defense he's ever yeah, Brady had. Brady fraud, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is the best defense that. That Mahomes has ever had. His defense is always play better in the playoffs, but second in the league in scoring defense. I mean, they have only allowed over 24 points a single time this year. Very similar to the Ravens' defense. So that is that matchup will be interesting. I like start to think how do you beat the Ravens team? Because going into Houston, you had all those questions and concerns. How do they adjust? Can Lamar do in the playoffs? It seems like that has gone out the window, and now people are like, all right, who's the better team? Baltimore's the better defense. Baltimore's the better offense. If Patrick Mahomes' name was Jatrick Latomes, this would be a seven-point spread. Like, that is the I, I gap. I think if it was Josh Allen playing for the Chiefs instead of Patrick Mahomes, I don't Josh think, is great. I, I, I don't think the talent is that much different, but there's something about Patrick Mahomes I don't think yes. you want to bet against. Yes. Obviously, yeah, a dog. 100%. Like, if you listed Mahomes at seven, everyone would take it, but every sharp better I've talked to, every person that runs the numbers, like, you don't want to be a nerd, I get all that, but, like, DVOA, all this stuff, the Ravens rank literally off the charts, but they have Patrick Mahomes. Who's their last loss to? Last loss was technically Pittsburgh Week 18 when they sat, but before that it was Cleveland, and that is how you beat the Baltimore Ravens. So what happened in the second half, Deshaun Watson went, I think, like, 13 or 14 with a fucked-up shoulder, but short passes down the field, convert third downs, most importantly, score touchdowns, not field goals. You have to, and Mahomes has made this adjustment over the last couple of years of his career. He used to just kill you deep. Mm-hmm. And they had eight plays over 20 yards. The Ravens defense, that's why I love Nico's lower last week. They just don't let you beat them over the top and with deep plays. So you have to get comfortable taking four, 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 and then cashing in. And the Ravens just... The defense hasn't allowed them to do that all year long. So they are, they're, the Ravens are normally trading touchdowns for, for field goals, and that's a winning formula. I do think, though, to speak, you know, <laughs> some positivity into the Chiefs, since, like, the Bengal game and their game against Miami and the Bills, their offense has been much higher tempo. They're getting to the line of scrimmage with a lot more time left on the play clock. And, nor- like, Throughout all offenses, that's more beneficial than waiting for, like, the last five seconds to snap. But I think making a point of emphasis for them has been a huge boost into really just getting Patrick Mahomes at the line of scrimmage, letting him dissect, giving defenses less time to adjust. And also, I think a big improvement with the Chiefs over these last couple weeks has been using two tight end sets. I think they've been able to run the ball, obviously, better that way. Like, it feels like Isaiah Pacheco... And this run game is the first time Patrick Mahomes has had, like, a legit run game mm-hmm. in his career. The, the Baltimore Raven defense is, like, good, very good across the board. But if there was, like you're saying, one thing that maybe this plays into it, like you have two tight end sets, shorter pass game, like, they could, that could be a way that they kind of chunk the yeah, Ravens defense. I, I mean, whichever team gets a lead in this game is going to be at a just massive advantage because – both teams are going to want to run the ball and sit back and let you kind of dink and dunk underneath. And that's when each defense is the best, when it's in a obvious passing down and you can pin the ears back for the pass rushers. So that's going to be hyper important. The Ravens run defense, that was definitely the their biggest flaw. And then last week, they corrected everything. I mean, I think Devin Singletary might have had like 10 carries for six yards or something. Like it was, it was borderline insane. So going back on the... Um Going back on blitzing Lamar real quick, like that historically was a recipe that worked, although it got kind of thrown out the window last week. If you're Spags, someone who wasn't really blitzing, 
in his last couple games. Yeah, I'm not blitzing him. You're not blitzing him. Mm. This might sound crazy. I don't know how you stop this team right now. I mean, it's, just, honest, it's a super fair either. question. Like, yeah. I, like, I don't want to sound – okay, I just poked myself in the eye. Maybe <laughs> that's how you stop <laughs> you okay? like contacting this team out. Uh, you know, I don't want to tempt the football gods. But it does feel similar to I was at that Bucks Chiefs Super Bowl where Mahomes was a superhero. Yeah. Their O line was was down in the dumps. But like the Bucks were just better across the board. A- and it didn't matter what Mahomes did. And then they fell behind it. It just became like it snowballed into that. It's kind of like what the Ravens feel like. Like it's like they'll run on you. You blitz, they'll beat it with the short game. They can hit shot plays. Do you think they there's get anything back to like if the Chiefs if they do dial it up, you know, they take the sample size of like Lamar more historically is not good. No, but this year, it's not just last game. That's the thing. Yeah. They, it was a concern. But do you think the Chiefs put any any weight on the fact that their secondary is better than the Texans secondary? Is it's it, like you have is more it, trust is it in the significantly blitz. better? I'm I'm not actually sure. I think, so. I think the Chiefs like Snead's been offense. off the charts. Right. But like Snead's been but, awesome. but McDowell, Stingley, yeah, Stingley gave awesome. me gave Stingley's me good, yeah, for sure. I mean Houston had some guys. Just asking the question, you know, yeah. Maybe maybe you feel comfortable if you're Spags blitzing, like turn it back up because you're like, you know, I trust my secondary. And that could fall apart quickly. Yeah, so so I think that's the thing with the Ravens. They're not if you blitz them, they're not even looking to gash you. Like they're not looking. Yeah. Zay gets deep, and and it's a it's a deep play. It's just like they'll take six yards here, and they'll keep moving the chains on you. Yeah, I don't want to seem biased, but I don't know what the recipe. The recipe is you got to turn Lamar over. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that is what you're saying. Let's blitz him. He's going to he'll they'll score. They'll put points on the board. But if but if they turn it over once or maybe twice, that's the game because that could one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, you give Mah- Mahomes turnovers. And yeah, and Mahomes just doesn't yeah. turn the ball over. But right. then I sit here and I'm like, we did not have a sack against Houston or a turnover in the game, and Houston did not touch the 25-yard line. I understand Pat is levels beyond C.J. Stroud. Well, you guys just fucking eat up clock. It's insane. Well, the second drives. half was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> the second half was yeah. like eight-minute touchdown drive, three and out, eight-minute touchdown drive. But yeah. that's what – but that's kind of what happens if you if you blitz Lamar now. Yeah, yeah. So it's tough. That's um, fair. What about some injury stuff? I was I was just about to bring it up. <laughs> Willie Gay was injured yes. in the last game. He's usually or he will be the spy, spy yeah. on Lamar if he's playing. If he's not there, it kind of feels like I don't know how you replace that. It Kind of feels like Lamar can just scramble all he wants that game. Does the spy even fucking matter? Kansas, yes. Kansas City. Or I think I think Willie Gay specifically is a good spy because he's so fast and he's smart. He's and smart. he's smart. Yeah. And it's you, I think you just need a linebacker like that to put blinders on. It's like I'm mm-hmm. focusing on yeah. you. Willie Gay injured. The safety got a concussion. He'll likely play. Uh, the biggest injury is Joe Joe Thune. Thune. You think so? Joe Thune. Because their yeah, backup, yeah. dude, their backup came in, and he might have been great for them. But but there, were, there was like no pressures allowed once the backup came in. Okay, yeah, maybe. But he, again, it's maybe not, it's not the Ravens defense. But either. this is and this is top five guard in football. He is, like, yeah, he is a Pro Bowler. And who are you betting on? Right? Maybe That's fair. maybe he does perfectly replace it. Injuries wise, none for Baltimore. And getting back Mark Andrews and Marlon Humphrey, literally two All Pros. They both both, both back both for sure. Likely to go in the game. I feel like Mark Andrews will at least be like a red zone package guy. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, Ravens fans. Here's a level of concern. Ravens fans don't like like the Ravens offense has been flowing, rolling. Lamar mm-hmm. less dependent on Mark as his go to guy, spreading the ball out. But what I said is Charlie Kohler played thirty five snaps. Give Mark Andrews those thirty five. There's no way that the Ravens aren't a better the team. The thing like I hate that. about like. I almost agree with that to a sense because what it does is it, it blocks a lot of production from a dude like Isaiah Likely. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And Isaiah Likely is so clearly like a stud yeah. right now for them, and he gives a spark to that offense in a way that a lot of their pass catchers like can't do that for them. So it's like Andrew steps back on the field, and it does steal a little bit of mojo, I yeah. think, from it, an explosive it could. standpoint. And especially because, you know, Marlon told me this. He was like, the way Lamar plays, and the reason why in a Kurt Warner breakdown, like three Ravens receivers might end up in the same space is because – Andrews and Lamar actually do a lot of freelancing, a la Pat and Kelsey. Okay. So in a system that has been so wor- so well working, it's like just run your route. So maybe is a deficit there. But I've seen people talking about Kansas City is going to counter the Ravens run with bigger players, less yeah. dime package. Okay, then go to tight end. And if those two tight ends right. are fucking Mark Andrews and Isaiah, like 
it's just I, matchups. I think, I think it does benefit having that receiving weapon back on the in line, which is something that like Isaiah likely was not doing. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It's yeah. I do think I do want to bring up one question because we were talking a little bit how this Chiefs offense has looked a lot better. Um, well, I I do want to add this nugget once again, not to be a nerd's guy here, but opposing defenses. No Chiefs. I that I kind of buy, but. No, Chiefs offensive efficiency, DVOA against Miami, where we I felt like they played better, was a zero. Like, it wasn't even an efficient. Now, their their efficiency against Buffalo was insane. 375 yeah. yards on 39 plays is, like, unheard of. Is it me or is, has, has, like, DVOA and EPA? Has that been something that people have always, like, really hampered on? I've only really noticed it going, like... No, it's, de- it's definitely, like, a newer stat. No, no, it's, it's been it's around. It's been around for a while, but, like, this year, I feel like or literally... It's I feel like I've followed it a little more. I mean, maybe it's because I'm nonstop talking about it. That it no, feels, I And then you though, start to it's see... Like, it's definitely... It's feels, more recently now being... EPA, yeah, to me, waited. feels more new than... I, you know what? DVR. You know what it might be for me too, though. This is the first year that I think I've started listening to more football podcasts mm-hmm. rather than fantasy stuff. Like fantasy people don't care about EPA right, and DVOA because right. it's a team thing, not yeah. an actual player thing. So I'm used to like yards per out run and broken tackles per attempt, yeah, or whatever. It's the same kind. And so when I listen to like the Athletic or I listen to any of these like football podcasts, they're always talking about EPA, and I was always like. Because you could, there is EPA per individual players, obviously. Mm-hmm. You can go to Football Outsiders and get, like, running back EPAs, but I always felt like those were terrible indicators on mo- – it, it was almost – It leaves out like, a lot of context. It felt like PFF grades, yeah. where it's like, this guy's ranked really highly, but, like, eh, I don't, yeah. I don't know. You know, that's kind of but how DVOA, I was it's so many data points. It's every play from the game. I, I think it's a telling stat. It's not – What's it, the difference between DVOA and EPA? Expected points added uh, – value over yes so like if you ran 100 plays the same exact time yeah this is what your expectation would be dvoa is essentially like a combination of what happened with sample sizes and all that stuff like the ravens would be the top dvoa team to not make a super bowl of all time the ravens would be a top dvoa team like there's so many met it's like Teams that who have this level of DVOA. Have so gone you're the, you guys are the DVOA champs. Well, DVOA goats. Ironically, so. there's two teams. Paper champs. There's two teams who have a 40% DVOA over the last decade or something and uh, that haven't gone to the Super Bowl. Two teams who have not made the Super Bowl who have, whatever, one of the all-time highest DVOAs. The Bills team that lost to the Chiefs. Uh, well, that's like every Bills team. <laughs> the one when they lost in the crazy back and forth game. And so the Chiefs have one with Mahomes, a win over a top team. And the Ravens, when they beat the Flacco year, when they beat Tom in the AFC championship. So both teams can definitely stump it. It's just, it's a good indication of what's likely to happen. I, I mean, I don't want to tempt the football gods, but even from Kansas City side, it feels like, it's just like, all right, you know what? We've got the experience. We've got Pat. Let's see what happens. We have an elite defense. Like, I haven't heard a game plan that I think could stifle or would indicate that the Chiefs are the right side in this one. And I think it's more to do with, I don't know, the de- like the defense has been nice, but I just think this Ravens offense like overpowers them. I don't doubt Mahomes can find some success at some level, but it just feels like they're going to run out of gas on this one. Where do you think there's a bigger advantage? Yeah, where do you think there's a bigger advantage, like uh, in terms of offensive defense? I think I think think our D against their offense, really, which is nuts to say, but yeah, the Ravens. I I would take the other side. I think it's your offense versus the Chiefs' defense. Yeah, I, I guess I I think I lean that way, and I think that's where I'm at mentally with this defense. Like it's just that special of a unit like i i know you guys think i'm crazy for what i was no, saying I, the other day but yeah. like that he is was claiming for them to be the one of the best units yeah. of all time like i think they might go down as one of the best units of all time sounds like dvoa chatter no 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 dvoa they led the league in scoring interceptions and sacks like there's stats to that as well they had the lowest scoring like, what were the eagles last year the Eagles did not lead in every single category. I know. I'm that. just curious. I actually yeah, don't know. They, the they were definitely. But I feel top, like they were statistically. They were insane. top ranks, but yeah. but here's the differentiator: the Eagles. Remember last year the talk about the Eagles' schedule, and how it was like, oh, yeah. but they haven't played anyone. But then they kept winning, so people kind of like brushed it aside. But then there were metrics that said when you ran motion against Philly, that's how you beat them. And the Chiefs motioned them to death in the Super Bowl, and and it worked. I mean, Mahomes didn't even go crazy in that game. He threw for like 200 yards. Crazy on the ground, though. 
Yeah, they ki- they killed him. He was scooting. That was moving. But the other side of this is the Chiefs have beaten a single playoff team during the regular season. Like, our feelings about them are real. They really have not performed well. And so I think, I think Buffalo is almost covering up for may, – look, maybe they found something. And or maybe that was – like, they know how to beat Buffalo. Yeah. I don't know. This, this was the other point I was going to bring up is that, like, we're talking about how their offense has – have they turned a corner. They did play a very depleted Miami and Bills defense. Like, th- those teams were <laughs> super banged up on defense. Yeah. I, I think that's I – th- I do think it's a little bit of a stretch, but this is for sure going to be a massive step up in competition as for an opposing defense. So Yeah. Right. Yeah, I take defense over their offense. Um, I don't want to tempt fate, so let me just put that out there. But Let's yeah. pick the game. You want to take a spread or you want to leave that – Untouched. No, I'll, I'll pick a spread. I mean, I I would lay the three and a half at the Ravens. I think it's really good value. Anything can happen in a football game, but that's the side I would be on. Final score, 31-13. Oof, 31. Damn, that's a beat down. If I had to pick a spread, I would lay the three and a half with the Ravens. I don't want to do that. Obviously, it's not a winning proposition over time, betting against Mahomes as a dog. I think the better bet I like is taking the Ravens team total of 24 and a half. We kind of talked about like, how do you stop this Ravens offense? I think I'd rather just go with the Ravens are scoring this game. And um, which also kind of lends itself to the over in general, 44 and a half, I believe it is, you know, I just think uh, chiefs run a higher chiefs are running a faster paced offense. So I think they're going to get a lot of plays off. And then I can also kind of bet on Mahomes that way too, you know, yeah. just taking the over of the game. So thirty-one, thirteen, Ravens team total over game there you under. Go. Game <laughs> yeah, under. I'm, I'm right with you. <laughs> All right, I like it. I'll, I'd lay. I'd lay the points of the Ravens. I think you've made me a believer this year in the Ravens. To be honest, you've been uh, pretty stark from the start, you know, and and the team has performed up to the way you've talked about it. So I'm. Um, I, I think I'm. I'm good with Baltimore there. Also, like let's talk about the fun aspect of the game. Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, Terrell Suggs. Todd Heap, Dennis Pitta. They're all coming back? All, all suiting up for this one? All back. Really? Uh, maybe like playing. Holmes, TV did. Holmes might be good. So they'll all be there. Yeah. Michael Phelps is the captain of the game. T Payne is doing the halftime show. I saw that. They T are Swift pulling. T Payne. They are literally pulling out every stop. So you will get a crazy home field advantage if anyone cares about that. Mahomes has said that's one of two stadiums that he's ever gone silent in. So there's there's other things. I'm just trying to make myself feel right. like I, I matter in the game. You do. Right, right, right. Thank you. You matter in this podcast. All right. Should we move on? Next it's time game? for you. Yeah. I know. Talking about home field advantage or the lack thereof, Niners coming off a stinker, somehow beat the Packers last week. So they're going to host the Lions. They're seven-point favorites. I got to be honest. I freaked out. I had a little bit of a meltdown during that entire game, and for the the hours afterwards, I feel a lot better. There I've been able it. to take a deep breath, exhale. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about this game. Why? Because where where do I want to start? Seven therapy. Session, I, I don't yeah. think Brock Purdy. <laughs> I think Brock Purdy is good. He can't play in the rain. I'll I'll, I'll never make sense to me how you know a little bit of wetness is gonna fuck up an entire dude's career, but. And man, even even man, in that game, many a men have been fucked up by the wetness. <laughs> that was so bad. Damn, I like, walked. I walked you into said that. This is I brought to you by Blue Chew. Chew. <laughs> Damn, dude. now we now we need that. Yeah, but I mean, you look at you look at the game. Niners had five incidents where DB slipped on a play that led to a first down or a touchdown. I don't know why the rain only fucked up the Niners that game. Like, I, it didn't really happen for the Packers. But you know what? We got the dub. That's all that's important. Survive in advance, on. honestly. I know. That, I'm, I'm kind of. Most championship teams will do that, right? right. One yeah. of them, you just got to get there. And they did. And but, yeah, they they'll deserve. always face, like, some sort of adversity along and, the way. And, that was the look, game. you walk away from that. Brock, I thought, played very poorly. Oh, horrible, up until the last drive. But if that's what he rides, that momentum, I think, and only because I had to deal with this from Lamar, I actually think that it's going to be a mental thing for him. And I think that he'll probably be more focused on the first 55 minutes and not the last five. Like, I think it could snowball if he also doesn't come out and isn't playing well or has to trail. He might have confidence in the the one drive, but I I do think it was like a negative, his performance. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a positive for sure. (laughs) But I will say, I think Brock Purdy, the guy himself, is a very resilient guy. He's bounced back from 
injuries and poor performances before. I think even in games for him to make that fourth quarter comeback, I think that says a lot for him able, you know, just mm-hmm. move on from a terrible game while it's happening. So I think between that, he, he is a good quarterback. I know people want to, like, shit on him. That's, like, the cool thing to do right now. I think a lot of the MVP talk probably got – him way too ahead of himself like he isn't he isn't Josh Allen he isn't Patrick Mahomes yeah. but he is a very good quarterback can I ask you because for the first time ever I engaged in Brock Purdy Twitter by accident Dub. and what is it about <laughs> Niners fans that they is it just because people have told him that Brock isn't good like I literally wrote he, I think this I is, wrote that love was a franchise quarterback and, and Purdy people, has proven that too. Right. And they were still pissed off. I th- okay, Why? so I don't think... That's what I didn't know. I think know. people are mad because most people sp- spit that narrative of the, the other way around, where Jordan loves a franchise guy, but yeah. Brock Purdy isn't. And I think that's... And it, it, it has nothing to do with Jordan Right, love. but that's why I was confused, because I even yeah. said, like, Purdy I, has I proven think, he's very good. I think do you're Niners, a hot crowd right now. Do you there, believe Brock Purdy's a franchise QB? I, I if you want my as, real thoughts, I think he is... He is an elite system quarterback. I only have so many tiers of quarterbacks. I think there's he Patrick has, Mahomes. Much. There's uh, there's guys. It doesn't matter if things are going well or bad. But Brock Purdy, if things are not going well, meaning O line is not blocking well, he doesn't have weapons. He doesn't have elite play calling. He just wouldn't be as good. Yeah, I think right. that's just factual. I think he is as much a franchise quarterback as Kirk Cousins, as Jared Goff, as even Dak Prescott. But if I said that back to you, you would have been. You would have been up in arms. No. If I, I said he's as, he, all he is is as good as Kirk Cousins, <laughs> you would have gone ballistic. No, I think Kirk Cousins is good. I would have gone ballistic when people don't acknowledge that he was having an MVP season. And that wasn't me saying he's as good as Patrick Mahomes. What? Like, in, well, in talent-wise, or, like, I would yeah. take him in a vacuum over Patrick Mahomes. It was right. just that when we were doing this earlier in the season— we had another guy here being like, he's not even top 10. He, there's zero chance he can finish as an MVP. Okay, player. all right. So you just said, you just named Kirk Cousins, Dak, and Jared Goff. Justin Herbert. I think, see, this is, this is the thing where it's like talent-wise. Yes, no, 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 no. I'm saying swap them. I'm saying swap them this year. Who's, like, who would you have, who would have been, who would you rather have on, on Sunday? See, I don't know if Herbert can play the system as well as Brock Purdy. That can be your take. Obviously, yeah. obviously, Herbert's got the stronger arm. He is more – he's bigger, so he's stronger. He moves better. But I think Brock plays the Shanahan system really well. Yeah. No, some quarterbacks also just fit a system better. Like, yeah. Tua yeah. is, is perfect in Mike McDaniel's system. Right. And he I wouldn't be good in the Ravens' system. Sure, absolutely. Like, I'm not saying Jalen – I'm not saying Brock Purdy's better than Jalen Hurts, but there's no way you're going to convince me Jalen Hurts would play better right. in Shanahan's system. Yeah, that's fair. Moving on. <laughs> going back <laughs> to this game against the Lions. I just had to understand Niners Twitter. Look, I, this is why I think Brock Purdy's going to bounce back. The last five weeks, the Lions have led up 340-plus passing yards in each of their last five games. We saw each? Baker – Yes. They've allowed 350 passing yards. Yes, Baker did it. In Nick five Moore. straight games? Yes, That's Nick insane. Mullins did it twice. Baker did it. Dak did it. Mullins being on there twice. And Dude, Mullins did it. Yeah, Stafford did it. And then Mullins did it twice. So their passing defense is so atrocious. I know we talked a lot about it last week and how it's it could get jack started. Yeah. Yeah. But I know I saw I saw comments being like, yo, the, the Lions could win the Super Bowl and you'll never believe in them. And I don't think I would, to be honest. I think this I really think this defense is getting so lucky. And it's hard to it's hard to predict when luck's gonna run out. I was gonna say, but like, it's eventually going to fucking happen. I know well, it. But in a two game sample, you can't. You can't. Yeah, that's luck. That's luck it thing. doesn't play out. Over but that games. also doesn't mean you should pick them either, because you can't rely on it. You can't. Like you can't rely, rely on, on either side. I don't of the think there's some completely relying on luck. No, I think no, it's no, going no, in no, their no. favor. It's, it's their their. I think their offense is very good. It's yeah. their defense has been getting them out of situations that I, I just don't think is sustainable. I'll give you my non-luck angle and why I'd like the Detroit Lions on Sunday. Asterix, if Debo doesn't play, I will pick Detroit to win. If he plays, I'm going to go with the Niners. I think he's that difference. But I don't no, know if he is. Number two against the run, which you might be saying, all right, so we want to be throwing. But I think you, if you can shut down McCaffrey as best you can, I think that's a plus for them. And then on the other side of the ball, I think the Niners' defense is the most overrated unit left in the postseason. Maybe the Chiefs' offense. Those two, I think, based off name and merit and historical, 
they're very overrated. The Niners' run defense is very average, and so is the pass defense. I like Kyle Shanahan to turtle every time he gets into a big game. It's proven. Would you disagree with that? No, I, I would agree with that. And, and I think and so as much on as the other play- side, you've got Dan Campbell, who we know is going to play like a maniac and double down on 16 against a 10. And as a big underdog, what are you looking for? You're looking for the maximum amount of variance in the game. So could they lose 31 to 13? 100%. Like if the Niners blow them out, I would not be shocked at all. But I like the recipe that Detroit has as an underdog. No pressure at all. Goff versus baby Goff. <laughs> I just see the potential. I'm, I got the blue mic. I'm, I'm on the line. If you, I'll say this. If you think the Lions can keep it competitive, I would just bet them to win outright. Agreed. Agreed. Because I think either – Brock Purdy and the offense is going to show up and they're going to steamroll this team Agreed. or they're going to choke like they should have last week. Agreed. I think the seven is kind of irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. You get plus 230, take yeah. that to the bank. I'm with you. But do you think the Lions win one in every three games they play? I Honestly, I don't. Really? I don't. I, the only thing that makes me kind of hesitant is how bad they were last week. Like if last week never happened and we were playing Sam the Fran, Lions. You're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because I don't – the other thing, too, like, the Lions have been severely outgained by the Bucks and the Rams. Like, that's such a low percentage chance of winning games where you're getting outgained by, like, two yards per play. And this is kind of going back to, the, like, the defense is getting lucky. Like, I just don't see a way where the Lions defense is going to be able to hold the Niners offense. I think maybe the offense kind of just keeps shooting itself in the foot. And the reason why I say I don't know if Debo's that big of a factor, whether he's in or out – I think Debo leaving in the middle of a game is way more hurtful than going into a game knowing you're not going to have Debo because I think it was apparent that like Debo was going to be such a big part of that plan. And like going back to the Ravens where they made all these halftime adjustments, Kyle Shanahan sticks to his plan and it could be going so horrifically bad. (laughs) He will not pivot. And so all of a sudden we're seeing handoffs to Jawan Jennings. (laughs) We're seeing Ray Ray McLeod run wrong routes. Like, Chris Conley's out there. Like, I just don't th- – I think everything that could have went wrong went wrong last week. If you don't have Debo, that's going to hurt. That's fine. But I think Shanahan will find ways to pivot off of that. That's fair. Like, he's got to know beforehand. Right. Yeah. I think it's kind of interesting. I feel like um, if Debo's out, I mean, the, the firepower on both sides of the offense are borderline equal. And then you look at – I mean, you say San Francisco's overrated as a defense, which may be probably true, but still a better unit than the Detroit defense. Yeah, for sure. So and it gives them the edge. There, I actually sure. think the defense played outside of like some slippage plays and some defensive PIs. Like they played really well. Like Jordan Love, who was the hottest quarterback in the NFL mm-hmm. going into that game, less than 200 yards, fourth quarter meltdown. You had Aaron Jones, who was tearing shit up outside of a 150 yard run. Dude was averaging like three yards a carry, had like 17 carries for 50 yards outside of one long one. Mm-hmm. Like I think, and the other thing about this Lions offense I think an underrated injury everybody wants to talk about the Debo injury they lost their guard Jackson Johnson I wrote his name down Johnstein but basically when his replacement came in he let up seven pressures which was a season high for any lineman on the Lions in a half a game he let up more pressures than any lineman you were also getting Eric Armstead back on the exact opposite mm. side of him. We want to talk about EPA per play. It's a massive jump up in a in a positive way for the Niners when Eric Armstead is on there. I think he played well his first game back in six weeks. You now have another week of him getting back in the groove. Like, I think as big of a L for the Niners, if Debo's not there, their guard's already been ruled out. Like, I think that probably counters it. And I think we even see it in David Montgomery prop lines. He was at like 50 rushing yards when the guard was ruled out. He's now down at 40. Like I think, mm, I think people are not I, expecting I the do, Lions to be able to run up the middle. I agree with that. I do think there's an element that maybe the Lions finally are shifting uh, responsibilities to Gibbs and knowing that to beat the Niners, they would use Demont down the stretch, but they're seven point dogs, and they're going to use Gibbs try totally. and get a, explosive plays and figure that out. And I, I so does Gibbs, Ben Johnson scare you though? Yeah, hundred percent. I think yeah. he's a really good. I think yeah. there's a chance Ben Johnson goes on and becomes a very prolific head coach. Yeah, and I think Gibbs, Gibbs scares me way more than Montgomery does, especially because Gibbs is going to be that outside runner, and Chase Young is such a fucking liability in the run game. He's such a cone. He is such 
a motherfucking cone. Dude. And he's not getting to the passer either, right? I don't I don't know. It kind of it kind of feels like Has Chase number, Young really actually ever been that good. I feel I like he was really so. exciting when he first got to the Niners. Well, he got hurt. The injuries of I sure. think his rookie year. Sure. sure. But yeah. remember, remember yeah. how the Rams had that like rotating door of guys who would play opposite of Aaron Donald, and they mm-hmm. would always have a good season, mm-hmm. like the Leonard Floyds, the Dante Fowlers. I think maybe Chase Young could be benefiting a little bit from that in the past rush game, but like that motherfucker was just biting on everything that like the, yeah. the Packers were running. That Ohio State education. <laughs> 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 Should we pick it? Yeah. Or is there any more therapy needed? Jake Moody. He didn't fuck up. See, okay, no, I'm. Yeah, he did. He missed. What a, do you mean? He yeah. missed one. What he do? He yeah. missed the field goal. He missed like a gimme forty yarder. So did Carlson though. That right. was a so that, crazy. That matchup. I felt like we were who's, even. Who's the Lions kicker? Badgley. 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 Out of the dome. I mean, that could. That could See, be. See, I'm. Good. I'm more. Worried you didn't about even mention the golf. You know, home road splits. That's that's the biggest thing. Is golf sure. literally turns into a different football player when he is not. What does he turn into? Uh, like a uh, like a jack o' lantern, <laughs> a grapefruit. <laughs> yeah, a pea, a mushed pea. Yeah, so I think I mean last week, visually, it looked as bad as it could be, but like really moving past it, I think I'm I'm fine. All I'm saying is, you don't think the Lions can keep getting lucky, but the Niners benefited from a great Niners deal got of luck. So lucky. I, you want to talk about like chances of winning that game? <laughs> I think how the Niners played last week, they win that game against the Packers like. One out of twenty five times. I agree. Like, like if it, Savage, if Savage gets a pick six, it's ten nothing. That game could have been yeah. a blowout. So, but the thing is, is I know the Niners are better than what they played last yes, week. Yes, yes, they are. Meanwhile, the Lions, I feel like, have continually showed that this defense is really Stinks. bad. It's poo poo. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna lay the seven with the Niners because I think they win. And again, I don't think this I, this full possession doesn't scare me. Like I I don't really see a way where it's like we kept it close and like Jake Moody. I swear to God, we need Jake Moody to kick a game when he feels mm-hmm. about to lose my shit. Or we need to have a camera on you at all at all times. Are yeah. these, these are both Sunday games. Where are you watching the game? Yeah, kind of want to go to Plug Uglies, but Plug Uggs, great spot. They, have, they have game audio there. Do they have what? like sound? Yeah, that's just, the biggest thing. Like if yeah, I yeah. I couldn't go to a bar that didn't have sound. No, for it's a game it's of this packed with Niners. Everyone oh, screaming yeah. first down. Who? 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 But okay. like, I I would have to watch the Ravens game there because you have to get there that early. Yeah. And then, so that's that just, like that's a, a full fucking day of drinking, you know? I, I don't have the You're pace. in the conference championship, my brother. That's what I mean. I won't make it to my game. <laughs> I'll be too drunk off your game that I won't even I know it's a crazy concept, but you could be in the bar and not drink yeah. until... See, I, I don't it's got that It's not willpower. possible. I'm with I you. I'm with willpower. you. I've been saying the whole week, I'm like, how am I approaching the game, right? So tailgates at 11, games at 3, like... Do tailgate's I have a it? different animal, though. Like, different. the energy that you get from a fucking tailgate, yeah. you're fine. Yeah. Yeah, you Fine what? Like I mean, I'm gonna you be, can ride into the game. Yeah, yeah, but I'll be. Yeah, you'll you're fine. Yeah, we're so gonna come into work on Tuesday. No voice whatsoever. <laughs> it's gonna be electric. All right, picks. I'm I'm taking my boys. Niners minus seven. What do you got? I'm 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 also gonna take the points with San Francisco, or I'm gonna lay the points. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, my official play. You already hinted. Lions that. money line. If Debo's out, if he's in, I'm gonna lay him with. Uh, do you think? Is. Do you think the spread would change at all if Debo gets ruled out? Like, I feel like it's a point. Uh, really what is point? it? Is it six Probably and a half? half? I feel it's like a, seven. Maybe a hook. It's seven. I think it'll go to six. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I um, mean, I feel like I've seen it mostly at six and a half. So to me, it's yeah. like a half point, moving a full point. But he's he's been so big for them. I mean, especially of, down the stretch, yeah. and then you get the public who's like. Already once to bet the Lions because sure. of the trendy dog, and then you get the oh the Niners sucked without Debo. So yeah. I think that narrative. Trend. I think that's that narrative is a little overblown. Like earlier in the season when Debo wasn't there, well Ayuk like, was cooking. What has Ayuk happened to Ayuk? What do you mean? I feel like he just hasn't been the same over the last month or so. Uh, his no, his he, production he, is no, just inconsistent because the I mean, offense is so good. Yeah, yeah. so like, many good players. Yeah. The Washington game was a little bit whatever. Yeah, but before that, the last three weeks before that, he was cooking, and then yeah. obviously the Green Bay game was. Yeah. Just you put shit him on an offense where he's like the clear one; he'll produce like. Well, it. that's like the first five weeks of the season. I felt like he was a hundred yard guy every game. It wasn't even like, dude. It was like the, the first week he was awesome, and then yeah. he kind of really yeah. He was he was turning it up, but it was like C Mac was doing was was like one seventy five three like half yeah. the time. It was like, what are you yeah. gonna yeah. do in that Good offense? Plan. So going to the Ravens game, the one I like the most is Noah Gray over nine and a half yards. We talked about how they use more tight end sets. This is just what I like the yep. most. 
he's been playing more. He's hit this in his last three meaningful games, not the one against the Chargers. But Do you have the snap counts for him, like what he's been putting it's up? It's like last, last week was 37, which was a season high. Okay. So it, it really just takes one catch from Noah Gray to hit this. It's Maybe it's a little bit of a coin flip, but I like it. Okay. What I want to go to on the Ravens side of things, Lamar Jackson over rushing yards feels a little chalky. Feels like it's definitely boosted up at 64 and a half. But we're talking about playoffs. Lamar yeah, they, playoffs. I mean, he's fifth all time in NFL playoff rushing so per game with 100 you, yards per game. Would yeah. you? That's insane. It's insane. Would you make that pick based on whether or not Willie Gay goes? If Willie, if it's Willie like Gay's Willie's out, in doesn't I'm matter. But if Willie Gay's I definitely out, like definitely. a lot more. I don't know. Hon- if, honestly, though, the thing is, the reason Lamar is rushing to such an uptick in the playoffs is because then they start calling design runs. Yeah. So in theory, this the spy thing is probably going to happen, and Gay's not going to limit him. Running like he's only gonna run when it's man to man and Gay's not in the box, so it's more the design run. Sixty five, I would take the the under. I, it's just it's. Boosted I, I mean, I sure. I wouldn't touch it. I yeah. wouldn't. T- it's just an insane line. Right. My favorite plays for that game: MVS and Justin Watson lower one and a half receptions. I thought you were about to take the higher. I'm just like no, no. I knew when he takes a higher on MVS deserves. Well, I took him. I took him last week live. And I made a lot of money. But Ravens defense, same thing I said about Nico Collins. They're not going to let you beat them deep. So for MVS and Watson, who are their deep ADP uh, player, A, a dot. A dot. You ready for fantasy. Yeah, I'm ready, ready for MVS. Best best a dot players. Round. Those, that's actually why I like those lowers with a correlation of like a Noah Gray higher because that's a player that will be in two tight end sets. They'll, they'll let you beat them over the middle of the field and move the stick. So okay. those are and my then, favorite, yeah. Between Justice Hill and Gus Edwards, you have no idea. I'll tell you Justice and the way I'm going, how cold I've been, the answer is Gus. Okay, because so his, take that his rushing yards out. are at 39 and a half. He's hit it in Justice four. or Gus? This is Gus. Yes. He's Gus. hit it in four of his last five. And like but by said, like four yards. Yeah. Right. No, last week he literally hit it by half a yard. <laughs> yeah. But I will say, you know, Spag's defense against the Bills last week, they were letting James Cook eat on the ground. They were they were mm-hmm. very willing to give running backs the short yardage stuff. So I think if he gets enough carries, like, he, he doesn't yeah, that, need enough that, carries. That's a bet on the Ravens winning somewhat comfortably and yeah. not trailing, right? If he if the Ravens are trailing at any point, Gus becomes a six-carry guy. The Ravens are leading 12 carries. So yeah. okay. that that's kind of – that's just the piece of advice of that. So maybe we like Justice Hill better. If I'll, you think it's going to – yeah, okay. if you think it's going to be closer, so – Justice Hill, seven and a half fantasy points. I hate his ass. Justice Hill stinks. Nah, dude. he's been spectacular. He's, he's, been, he's, he's been honestly kind of been the best running back for the Ravens since Keaton went down. Okay. Like, the Ravens really want Justice getting more touches than Gus, but Gus will get you five a carry on the ground and, and protect the ball a little better. So, okay, it's 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 really just a guess. You've talked me into Justice Hill. I like his um, That's who I like. 13 and a half receiving yards. Yeah, rece- yards. I, I, I favor the rushing. Okay. I favor the rushing. Okay. Good to know. Uh, moving on to the second game. Hinted at it a little bit earlier, but Jameer Gibbs over 47 and a half rushing yards. I think they lean on him more than Montgomery. I think just the way the Lions are going to run the ball, I think he will find more success. So I like the Gibbs over there. I'm also going to go with Brock Purdy over 274. Again, Nick Mullins. I thought that was, yeah, that was like, like 288. I, w- oh, I was going to say lower. That just number feels very high. No, that number is yeah. stupid high. No, yeah. I think that's but like but ev- that's right. But every quarterback that's is how they're going to attack by him. by a mile. Yeah, it, so that's one that I don't fear. I don't fear the because high line of how high it is. Like even in a game, t- I mean, we've seen Brock throw twenty five passes and three hundred yards. Yeah, that's I, why I don't. What what were um, I'm I'm just, I'm trying to think. What did Mahomes throw for last week against Buffalo? Do you know. Either you? I don't know off the top to, of my head. I don't know. I kind of feel like we have not seen a lot of big passing performances. Like, I feel like in the— Only against the Lions. In the it's playoffs. It's literally only against the Lions. Yeah. Defense is, like, kind of lock up, yeah, <laughs> except for the Lions, but— Mahomes only went 215. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like we've just seen low passing performances in the playoffs, and defenses kind of lock in or whatever, I mean, but— It's not. They play the shell, yeah. too, too deep shell, and they— Baker don't. just went 350 on them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do like the Brock higher. And then one more— I like McCaffrey th- lower yards, though. Rushing. Okay. I, I I did a pivot off that. Lower than 19 and a half rush attempts. 19 and a half is a lot. He's only hit it in one out of his last 10 games. 
CMC? CMC. They were feeding him at some point, but Mitchell's not well, touching the ball. Is no, he? he's not. Last, I mean, last week he had like 14 fucking targets or something. Yeah. Like it was, it was a lot of it was CMC through the air. had 14 targets. I'll I'll double check, but it was double digit <laughs> targets. It was high. That's up there, insane. Dude. I mean, Brock Purdy couldn't hit shit, so he just kept trying yeah. to dump it off. I mean, it's not a bad strategy. He's a good player. No, it's not. Um, but again, like that, I don't know why the line's so high because Lions have a good run defense. I mean, they're seven point favorites, right? So, like, if they're up two touchdowns, that's eight carries in the fourth quarter. Sure, I guess that's fair. Um, the carry stuff, as you learn, and they with ride. Najee, it's just like uh, C Max, like a dude that they fucking ride. Him and Kyron yeah. are the two guys that I don't fear. If if you think that the Niners are going to leave from start to finish, take higher nineteen half carries. Yeah. Like, there's mm-hmm. other like Tony Pollard. But like I mean, he would never get there even sure. in blowouts. But yeah. I mean, there's been games where they've blown out, like they blew out the Eagles. He wasn't getting to 20 carries. Yeah, like but they, that they one was out. like that one was slightly different. It was like every time they threw the ball, they would score 75 yard touchdown. That's fair. Yeah. Like That's they, fair. they didn't even have. But C Mac, it always feels like. I even think about this from fantasy when it's like the, your opponent has C Mac and it's like all right, they're up like 40 fucking six points already on the opponent, and they're like C Mac carry, <laughs> yeah, carry, yeah. dump off. I'm like, this is unnecessary. Okay, so you would go. Under 89 yards. Yeah. I'm always worried about him breaking off a long one, yeah. even against a really good defense. So, yeah. I'm going to go with attempts, but it's what it be. Niners, right, well. Niners, Ravens, Super Bowl. That's the luck. That's the logo, brother. That's the logo. Yeah. That's Scripted. what the script writers put in there. <laughs> See you on the other Take side. Take us away, <laughs> JMO. <laughs> All right. There you have it. Conference Championship. We will be like in two weeks for the Super Bowl preview. Hopefully, it is the Niners versus the Ravens. We'll get a lot of yelling. This will be pretty much a boxing match, and I will just be the special guest referee in the middle of it. Uh, Herb so they, Dean. So they can both get their... Uh, It'll be their, like when Shawn Michaels... They're yapping out. See, they can't even... They can't, we can't even get to the fucking <laughs> a, a, outro here before they want to eat each other. Pause. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out. Hit the button that looks like this down below. Make sure you are subscribed to Snapback Sports' YouTube channel as well as the Punchline Podcast where Mr. Jack is hosting Marlon Humphrey weekly talking about the Baltimore Ravens. All right. See y'all.